Hello everybody, I am Somu Kantikiri. Welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss absorption okay, from pharmacology and from biopharmaceutics also. Okay, so let's start. See what is absorption? Absorption means it is the entry of the drug into the blood. Okay, I mean entry of the drug from the systemic uh, into the systemic circulation is known as your absorption okay so and one more important thing is only unionized form of drugs are absorbed okay i mean a drug molecule it's a drug molecule and it is go it is going to be unionized okay at stomach okay that means it will be absorbed from the stomach or from the acidic environment okay so the drug molecule at which ph it is going to be unionized okay at that particular ph or from that particular ph it is going to be absorbed okay so this is the main thing and here you can see the drug transport routes okay so there are basically two main drug transport routes one is paracellular okay and another is transcellular okay paracellular means paracellular means paracellular means see here is one cell okay and another is one cell okay so the gap between these two cells is known as paracellular route okay here i have mentioned see this is a gap between these two cells okay and in case of transcellular routes in case of transcellular transport or transcellular route is actually through the cell okay i mean the route is going through the cell i mean the drug is going to be absorbed through the cell okay that is known as your transcellular route okay and another important route is carrier mediated transport carrier mediated transport means here uh, you can uh, see several carrier molecules are here okay and they will engulf or they will take the uh, load or payload okay and release inside the systemic circulation okay so this is the basic thing and here drug transport mechanisms it is very very important okay it is very very important drug uh, drug transport mechanisms okay there are see there are two main transport mechanisms one is passive transport mechanism another is active transport mechanism passive transport mechanism means here atp is not used okay and active transport means here atp or energy is used okay and see Passive transport is divided into mainly three part. One is passive diffusion, another is facilitated diffusion, another is ion pair transport. Okay. And in case of active transport, two main divisions are there. One is primary transport, primary active transport, another is secondary active transport. Okay. I am going to discuss this all these okay uh, simultaneously. See passive diffusion passive diffusion it is the it is the maximum or it is the major process of absorption of more than 90% of the drugs to be absorbed okay it is the it is the main process of drug absorption okay and it happens along the concentration gradient okay see this is the cell membrane okay this is the cell membrane and here the concentration of the drug molecules are more okay so here the concentration of the drug molecules are more or high positive i am going to denote and here no drug molecules are there i mean concentration e inside the cell is low okay and due to the positive concept due to the positive potential okay potential means the concentration gradient due to this concentration gradient drug molecules will pass through the cell membrane and will reach to the cellular environment okay through these two routes mainly one is paracellular and another is transcellular okay so this is the main process and more lipophilic drug molecules at a higher concentration i mean to pass or to pass through the cell membrane the drug molecules must have some kind of lipophilicity okay so higher the lipophilic the drug molecule is 
so it is going to be very easy for it to cross the your uh, cell membrane okay so coming to the next diffusion uh, or a next passive transport process one is facilitated diffusion see facilitated diffusion uh, is a very important process where the carrier mediated transport see it's a it's a passive transport facilitated diffusion is a it's a passive transport but carrier mediated carrier mediated i mean here carrier is used carrier is used but no energy is also used okay and it is as carrier molecules are used here so it is faster than the passive diffusion okay and examples are like transport systems include entry of glucose into the rbcs okay and intestinal absorption of vitamin b1 and b2 these are coming under in your facilitated diffusion okay so next ion pair transport see i have given this picture from your brahmankar okay biopharmaceuticals by brahmankar here you can see this is the gastric lumen okay this is the cell membrane and this is a blood okay here cationic drugs are going to be connected with endogenous anions okay and neutral ion pair complex will be formed and that ion pair complex will easily transport through the membrane and after reaching into the blood they will further dissociate into free drug and your endogenous anion okay this is the basic principle of ion pair transport okay then coming to the active transports one is primary active transport primary active transport see active transport means energy is required here but in case of primary active transport in case of primary active transport atp is directly used i mean the energy is coming from the direct hydrolysis of the atp okay and here the main carrier protein which is involved to transport the drug molecules okay is atp binding cassette or abc family and unfortunately these are your efflux transporters i mean see if this this is a cell membrane if this is a cell or cell membrane whatever maybe it's a cell okay then the efflux proteins or efflux transporters like abc family proteins or transporters they are here and they actually do not allow to enter drug molecule inside the cell and they actually actually kick out the drug molecules okay so that is why they are the efflux transporters okay they mediate only efflux of the solute from the cytoplasm okay and uh, one more important thing both facilitated diffusion and active transport okay follows the michaelis maintain kinetics it is very very important in case of passive diffusion in case of passive diffusion passive diffusion follows only first order kinetics and in case of your primary uh, so, sorry in case of facilitated diffusion and active active transport that means carrier mediated transport mechanisms always follow michaelis maintain kinetics okay it is very very important in, uh, i think in 2016 or 2015 it was asked okay it was asked by um, gpat okay in gpat it was asked then coming to the abc family abc family means this is a kind of transporters okay these are the kind of transporters which are uh, responsible for efflux okay and uh, they are doing your primary active transport okay they are mainly efflux transporters they are mainly efflux transporters and total eight sub family are there okay and uh, important ones are ab abc b abc c abc g okay and c it is very very important because mdr1 or pgp mdr1 means multi drug resistance protein or pgp means p glycoprotein is the most common efflux protein or efflux transporter present in our body and it is situated in your blood brain barrier and intestinal mucosa okay that is why the blood brain barrier is 
so much sophisticated that it cannot allow or it do not allow any kind of drug molecules okay into the brain okay that is why the brain targeted drug delivery it's so much difficult okay and coming to the next point multi drug resistance associated proteins okay and bcrp and bcrp sorry and uh, bcrp bcrp is also important okay breast cancer resistance protein okay so these are these two are also important efflux transporters okay so coming to the next secondary active transport secondary secondary active transport means here energy is required but it is not obtained from the direct hydrolysis of atp okay here SLC transporters, I mean solute carrier transporters are involved. Okay, those are not efflux transporters. Those are influx transporters. Those are influx transporters. Okay, see in case of primary active transport, in case of primary active transport, the transporters were the transporters were efflux transporters. But in case of secondary active transport transporters are influx okay and here symport antiport uniport these terms are used see this is cell okay and one a molecule is going to be uh, delivered or going to be transported inside the cell so one molecule is going to be uh, uh, going to be transported inside the cell that is what that is why it is known as uniport in case of A and B, both are going to be transported inside the cell. So, that will be known as your SIM port. Okay. In case of A is going to be delivered inside the cell and B is going to be delivered outside the cell. So, that in that case, in that case, it is known as antiport. Okay. So, this is the SLC family. SLC family means solute carrier transporters okay mainly influx transporters okay here total 52 subfamilies are there but two important transporters are there one is oat i means organic anion transporter those actually carry the anions from the uh, your uh, from your uh, cell i mean uh, transport into the cell and another is organic cation transporter okay octs those transport cations inside the cell okay so this is the end of our video hope all of you like the video please like share and subscribe our channel thank you